Okay, so angular momentum. Again, we can use clockwise or counterclockwise for rotational direction, but when things are more 3D, that right-hand rule direction is good. So what direction is the angular momentum here? Of course, I'm torquing it, adding angular momentum. Angular momentum is this way. I go like this. Angular momentum we say as a vector is this way, or clockwise, counterclockwise, either way is fine. Now, when this object interacts with another object, it'll, if I drop something, this has no angular momentum. When it drops, this will rub or give it some friction and start making this go. While the chair is rubbing the ring this way, the ring is rubbing the chair the other way. So while the chair speeds it up, speeds the ring up, the ring slows the chair down. How do I analyze that? How do I deal with it? Just use conservation of angular momentum because these bearings are relatively free. So A, or I can call it C for chair, C has angular momentum. Uh, R, for ring, has none. Total angular momentum, this plus zero. After, total angular momentum is the same. Now eventually the bearings slow it and stop it, so we're not worried, we're looking at it just after. So as this sped up, this slowed down. That was significant, and you could see it. So the total angular momentum stayed the same, while one went up and the other went down. Now you could do it for something else. Still, you can see the, during that interaction that, that angular momentum is going to be conserved. Energy isn't. You heard the sound. You get the jiggling energy going out, but momentum is. I can take a chunk. Angular momentum now is going to be according to the chunk equation, so I go like this. And again, it's going to speed up rotationally. <laughs> ah, it didn't stay. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> it's going to speed up. It's going to slow this guy down. So let's do this. You know, we need the I, we need the omega before and after, and it's all cool. So now, let's get up here and do this. Alright. Let's see if I can do it this way. Oh, that's dangerous. That's pretty good. Okay. Angular momentum, motors, torque, motors that twist, right? So here we go. The motor is spinning at this, this is spinning this, right? All kinds of forces, but we can think of it in terms of angular momentum. Okay? How are we doing there? Can you see it? Now obviously, if I let go of this and I just hold it here, that thing's gonna fall because gravity's pulling down on it, right? I mean that 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 uh, wheel is going to fall, gravity is pulling it down. If I just hold it up right here, well, that's going to be a problem, except, hey, wait a minute. Gravity is pulling here. I got a lever arm. There's force. There's a lever arm. It should rotate around there. And so it looks like magic. Like I said, the, the theory is nice. Because our intuition starts having trouble keeping track of everything. In fact, we have all these pieces of the wheel going in all different directions, wanting to go straight, in essence, or naturally just going straight. And so what's happening is they're being pulled on and they're being turned, redirected. So the forces inside the tire, each piece is being pulled on, right? So now if I slow it down and let's see if oh yeah that just falls but if this piece is going that way and it tends to fall so it wants to be pulled this way how do I keep track of that that's crazy this is the essence of gyroscopes There's the rate of rotation here. There's that omega, which you use the lowercase omega. It looks like a rounded W. And then there's the rate of rotation. Oh, let's go here. This way, which we often use as a capital omega. We call it precession. Now, how can you understand that? Well, let me see. Let's use, I'm going to tell you, you need to use that right-hand rule direction. So the force is down. 
The lever arm is R from here to the, the force, the point of application of the force. As it's spinning, I've got R, I've got F down, so R cross F gives me a torque this way using right hand rule. Now don't let this, you know, if your professor says you have to know this fine, but I usually don't blow people's minds like this, so I don't hold you accountable for this. But R cross F, using the right hand rule, vector R, F is down, is that way. Well, that's the torque. So the torque's that way using the right hand rule direction, which is completely unintuitive. Well, that's also the direction of the change in angular momentum. Because torque over time equals net torque over time equals the change in momentum. So the change in momentum will be this way. Now, if I'm rotating that way, my L is, I'm, don't, I know this is confusing. If my L is that way, and my change in L is that way, I got a vector that way plus a change in L that way, then the L should go over here, the new L. Vector L, change in L, which is parallel to the torque, torque over time. This is hard, I know. That means that the new vector will turn. So if I go this way, let me make sure I got that. Change in angular momentum is that way, making it spin. That is, like I said, is a good example of why wow, your intuition just got left at the door. You know, and now we're using this like silly little math bookkeeping device called the right-hand rule direction, which if we were mostly left-handed, we'd use the opposite direction, but we better still get the same physical result because our theory's got to match experiment. And real quickly, our intuition gets left at the door. We can build it but we build it based on the mathematics because there's really all kinds of interactions when we talk about rigid bodies rotating. Okay, now let's, uh, let's do this some more. This one's kind of fun. All right, let's see, which way is that going? That's going around that way. All right, so it's rotating this way. So angular momentum is up. I got no angular momentum right now. Well, thank you, I can feel it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that'll be fun. <laughs> A little bit too much angular momentum. Okay, here we go. Angular momentum is up. I got zero. So the total angular momentum should be up. If I make this go down, my angular momentum's got to go up. There's me. Yeah, my angular momentum is up. It's down. The total is up. Now I got some friction. That's true. Now the angular momentum is down. Mine's zero. Oh, now the total is down. LA plus LB equals LA plus LB. Okay? <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> now, what's happening? They're interacting in this complex system where the rigid body structure is every piece is pulling on every piece and redirecting every piece. And, you know, go ahead and do force analysis for every piece if you really want to, but I don't. That, this is a nice theory. You know, I get the right result. So in space, I can turn around. I just can't get anywhere unless I can push off of something, right? I can turn. You can swim in space, and uh, yeah. And so you guys got to head out. But it's fun. You just do concentration on angular momentum. It goes a long ways, and it helps you think about it in a very kind of uh, indirect, clever way.